That freedom of speech is alive and well in Hong Kong is clearly visible in the enormous amount of video footage circulating on the internet. When a policeman shot a protester during the recent day of protests in the city, a video of the 7 a.m. incident showed up on my phone at 8.05, and this in a city that doesn't like to wake up before 9.30. But the iconic video of the week was of tear gas shells rolling through the pedestrian crossing in Hong Kong's main business district of Central. As the shells spewed out clouds of smoke, buses and cars casually rolled over them, and business people scurried to and fro as they always do at lunchtime, albeit a little quicker than usual and holding their arms over their faces. I'm often asked, how's it going to end? As if I know, neither the government or the protesters have any answers. But the most likely scenario is that the smash lust of wanton damage to public property is likely to wear itself out. If the police can resist the calls to get more aggressive, the current containment policy could head off more blame being directed at officers. And that in turn would reduce the number of excuses for more rioting. Popular support for smashing up trains and universities can't last forever. Despite the panicky comments from the police themselves, Hong Kong is nowhere near being on any kind of brink. Moving around delicately, accepting transport delays while going about one's daily business is what we do in a typhoon. It may not be business as usual, but adapting to new circumstances is a city's usual way of doing business. So amazingly, towards the end of October, Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index started to move up despite the escalating unrest. And that's because stock markets tend to discount current news and look ahead. The market had assessed the riotous disturbances as being part of a new normal and accepted it. That means that the news needs to be a lot worse before shares start to suffer. Something like indiscriminate live firing by the police, daylight curfews, or even Chinese military intervention. The market clearly believes that none of that's going to happen. And unless it does, the market's unlikely to dip below the lows of August. Hong Kong usually recovers from a deep recession in one quarter with a big boom in the next. A bunch of anarchists creating mayhem is bad, but the global challenges facing our stock market will be even tougher to handle. And I'm talking about trade talks, recession, negative interest rates, debt. So, while a new normal of demonstrations and inconvenience in Hong Kong may not take the market below the lows of August, the biggest dangers in the global economy might well just do that.